this video I'm going to talk to you guys about the 2000 round experience that I've had with the Glock 23 Gen 4 and here are my notes that we're going to follow along with. So first thing first is, yes this is a Glock on my channel and a lot of people don't think I appreciate Glocks or like them or whatever, but I'm more of a alternatives other than the common trendies. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? First off, 2,000 rounds is not very much for a firearm. I consider 2,000 rounds to be good for a full-size firearm to check, uh, I kind of call it the amnesty period, where you can check for manufacturer defects. So if a spring's going to break it, and it was not manufactured or heat treated properly, you'll typically find an issue within the first 2,000 rounds from my experience. At least that's my experience. There, It's nothing formally written, it's just my experience. So. <clears throat> Um, 2,000 rounds is the time that I use and for just doing an initial check. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that because there, there are some things that did happen at 2,000 rounds. So anyways, first things first, round count source. So this is the type of ammunition that was being used through this firearm. So I did have um, I had 800 rounds factory, factory ammunition that was split between 600 rounds of Winchester Training to Defend and 200 rounds of Blazer Brass. So. Uh, I also had about 600 rounds, yeah, 600 rounds of um, hollow points. That's 100 rounds of Winchester White Box, about 100 rounds of the Remington uh, HTP, the high terminal performance ammunition, and then the regular Remington generic hollow points, the 180 grain jacketed hollow points. So <clears throat> it had a good amount of hollow point testing and you know, it, they did fine. All the hollow points actually uh, did fine, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, that was uh, that was all good. So, uh, that was uh, that was those. And then of the rest of it was reloads. So that was about 600 rounds of my own reloads, 165 grain. And so, yeah, they were loaded pretty hot, so you could definitely tell a difference. So, other than that, that that was only the only 165 grain uh, rounds put through. So I had no 165 factory. Uh, that went through it. So that was the source. Now my routine with this firearm was working with it pretty much every day, taking a couple days off to give my forearms a rest or whatever because I had a pretty intense uh, training cycle and I obviously continue it. It's something that I do all the time. But I worked with it daily and 95% of the shots I I uh, put through this were done dry or like with a laser trainer or a snap cap. I didn't actually sit there and dry fire it with nothing in it to protect the uh, firing pin. Even though you can do that, uh, with Glocks they tend to last a little bit longer just because of the way the firing pin's designed. I don't like stressing them out like uh, ridiculously like that, so uh, put a snap cap in there or use a laser trainer. So <clears throat> that was basically the way I used the firearm and it was a way, it, this thing was a window for me to test other things, holsters, um, magazines, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, as far as cleaning is concerned, I cleaned this thing really on a whim, like when I felt that it needed to be cleaned. It wasn't really a stress test. This wasn't part of the, well, I'm going to shoot it without cleaning it or lubricating it right off the bat because, you know, I'm stress testing it. Almost no firearm is going to give you a problem, you know, going out the box dry. I mean, say for some 1911s, I would be giving you problems regardless. But, you know, that is what it is. But I cleaned it and lubricated it with Break Free CLP, generic, you know, no big deal. But I did shoot it dry a lot or I just continued to do it because I was trying to accelerate the wear on the pistol because I like wear. And I like seeing uh, seeing the wear around the barrel, what they call the Glock smile. So, yeah, I would, I would keep this area relatively dry or, you know, minimal lubrication on this area because I want to wear this uh, area out. I love the wear on this pistol, so you know, when it actually is worn a lot, like one of the Hickok 45 pistols. Uh, so, that was my cleaning. And, you know, I got detailed twice on it just to break it down all the way and uh, I wiped down all the components. Uh, I haven't sat there and done any polishing or anything ridiculous to it, so we're kind of moving into the modifications. I haven't done anything to the trigger. The only thing I've done is actually use the pistol, and the trigger has actually gotten quite nice, so it's down to about 5 five pounds or so, so, you know, I'm not really a trigger gauge snob, I'm more of the feel, so typically people will admire a smooth trigger, and at least that is the opinion of people that have actually used this, they, they actually, 
seem to find that it is actually quite a smooth trigger. It almost feels like an aftermarket one just because it's been worn in pretty well. So the modifications part of it would be the sights. So there had been no polishing, no internal uh, junk being put in here. Uh, it's just been the sights that were replaced with uh, from polymer to steel. I got the steel U-notch sights and I'm pretty happy with them. However, I might actually upgrade upgrade to the luminescent sight, so if you shine a flashlight on it, it'll be, uh, it'll glow for a while. I actually uh, like these sights the way they are. I think they're good combat sights, but I might actually change them to something else just to test sights, because this is a good platform to test other stuff, gear. So, anyways, as far as aftermarket stuff, ETS mags. 16 round ETS mags. Uh, the performance that those gave me will be saved for a review on the ETS mag, so don't expect that here. So, unless you saw that in another video, um, then, you know, I'm not going to talk about the performance I had with that because it's not pertinent to this, uh, this uh, firearm. All I can say is aftermarket accessories are going to uh, give you you know, their own little performance, but it's on you to know the difference between your aftermarket part giving you a problem and the gun itself giving you a problem. Especially if it's all stock, you can definitely tell the difference. It'll be pretty clear. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into reliability. I did have some issues with it. I'm not going to get into too many nitty-gritty details, but the, the only thing that I really felt really concerned about during it was actually the inline stovepipes. The inline stovepipes were really odd. I did have some issues, like I had one issue where there was failures to feed, but I would chalk that up to actually something that was inside the chamber, because on a remedial axle and jarring it from racking it, it seemed like it, it was all resolved and the ammunition actually fed fine. So, you know, from my past experience with uh, factory ammo that was actually out of tolerance uh, and actually would not chamber, uh, then you know, I would actually chalk it up to actually something being in the chamber and blocking it from being able to fully seat and go in the battery. So, you know, that is what it is. That's based off my experience and that's my judgment call. So, as far as the firearm being the actual issue, I would I would say that it's only the inline stove pipes that I experienced. I experienced that while shooting one hand and I actually had a guest on my range, Chuke from Chuke's Outdoor Adventure, so he did get it on camera. <laughs> so, yeah, someone said I was limp wristing that or it was a shooter error. And that's pretty cute. But, yeah, uh, coming from a stormtrooper, but uh, whatever. So the other one was actually later on with factory ammo. And, you know, yeah, had issues with factory ammo and reload. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, from my experience with Glocks in the past, the extractors are a weak point. Uh, so... You know, you do need to be good with your little uh, malfunction clearance, so, yeah. That's that's my biggest recommendation. So, as far as reliability is concerned, it's been pretty good considering my, my record with them in the past. I mean, it hasn't been all that great, but, you know, it's doing fine. Stock magazines, factory magazines, all stock parts, it's doing okay. For, the, uh, for only doing this within the first 2,000 rounds, I think it's doing okay. Um, <clears throat> now, the wear. The wear is very minimal on this, given that it's a 40 caliber. There really isn't very much. I mean, even here on the barrel, I mean, you're not getting very much, except for a little bit of a line here. And even underneath, you're not really getting all that much. I mean, yeah, there, there's really not much going on as far as wear to make me all that happy. I mean, you got a little bit here where it locks in, but you don't get over the top wear. So, you know, it's pretty minimal. I mean, when we break this down, Get a little bit of scraping from the recoil spring which is pretty standard i mean it'll sit there and scrape on there not a big deal and then of course right here where it rubs right in there it's going to wear it's not really you know too shiny or whatever but you can definitely tell that there's been some wear there so you know it's going to wear and the breech face is obviously going to wear too so at 2,000 rounds is not really uh, getting all that ugly just yet. Most of the most of the wear has been from like me holstering and stuff like that. So I've got a little bit of wear on the corners here and stuff like that. So you know, other than that, it's really not much. So yeah, it's actually some pretty good wear from my Harry's holster. I noticed that the wear actually only really started coming on from the Harry's holster, the Kydex. But I'm also getting wear here on the trigger guard as well from that holster 
and that just means that it's holding pretty tight and I'm yanking out pretty hard so you can see how the trigger guard's actually smoothing out, it's taking the texture off of there. So that's not really a bad thing, it's just showing the little bits of wear, how the finish isn't exactly staying on on this Gen 4, but other than that, you know, the, the firearm's doing okay. I, I expect that there's going to be problems down the road, it, it just happens. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be doing another little review of a round count review at about 5,000 rounds, so it's going to be a while because, I, like I said, this is going to be a long haul. I'm not just going to throw 5,000 rounds through it and make a judgment call on the longevity. I'm going to use this. It's going to get dry fired a good amount with, obviously, snap caps and laser trainers and stuff like that, so I'm going to continue as I've been. Uh, I'm not really in a rush to do this, but I'm going to maintain it as normal as I would any other pistol, but it's going to get an organic round count buildup. So it's, things have kind of slowed down because I gotta have components for reloading. So I'm pretty much just reloading at this point. So uh, I've kind of taken down my reloads to kind of match the recoil of the uh, uh, factory loads. But so far, I mean, you can feel the recoil more with this pistol, and uh, it's pretty much like on par with my Breda 96 as far as like how you can feel the difference between factory and hot reloads or whatever. So. Yeah, and things like uh, comparing it to like a USP-40, no comparison to USP-40 is like shooting like a like a weak 9 mil. So, um, with all that said, you know, I appreciate you guys watching. That's 2,000 rounds, really not much to report. It's just uh, a little things here and there. I expect that I'm going to have some issues, at least some growing pains, and there were. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, but I'm pretty excited to get down the road with this thing, so should be interesting to see how it performs. So I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and you guys have a good one.